final question. Uh, one of you two will face our incumbent, David Price, assuming he has no primary opposition, in the fall. And what would be your game plan to expose his his liberal voting record uh, in, a, in basically what is a conservative district instead? You understand the question? I was trying to. I, 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 I believe it's like you, you want my game plan, so everybody wants. Um, Mr. Price, as most of you know, has 100% approval rating by your favorite organization, by the acronym ACLU. 100%. And that's an honor that I want to stay away from. In fact, from their point of view, I want to be their worst enemy. This gentleman, for over 20 years, did several things. Number one, he has pushed, encouraged liberal agenda to damage this country as one of the leading proponents of liberalism. When you're in an institution for 20 years, you know what that makes you? A professional. He's a professional politician. He no longer serves our district. You know why? Because it's all about him now. He's lost the concept of serving the district. Second thing is, this man has deprived an entire generation of individual young men and women an opportunity to serve our country. And that is disgraceful. You know, it is my intention to run maybe three terms. Get my agenda, get national security, immigration, lower taxes, submit that, get that out of the way, and I want to step aside. You know why? Because I want the next generation of Americans to take my place and run and serve their country. Because back in 1776, they were farmers. They served the uh, Congress and they went back home. And it was for the people and by the people, and that's what I want to see back again. I think the biggest weakness David Price has in 2008 is that he defines the status quo. And if you look at the reality of the congressional approval rating, 25% people approve of the job Congress is doing, David Price personifies the status quo. It's going to take money to beat him. It's going to take a lot of effective communication to beat him. It's going to take a lot of reaching out to folks that Republicans might not otherwise consider talking to to beat him. But I believe the struggle is worth that effort. It's worth building those bridges, because if we don't, we're left with, what? David Price and the status quo. We've got to change. We've got to change. So it's, it's not going to be easy, but my strategy is all about building bridges. We need to talk to people. We need to talk to people about the issues. And we need to stop dividing our country against itself, because the issues we're facing are American issues. They're not Republican or Democrat issues. My opponent talks about being subservient to China and how dangerous that is. Folks, we've given them $1.5 trillion of our reserves. There's a mutually assured destruction scenario here. It's not atomic war, it's economic. We've got to start acting in our best interest as a country, and folks need to realize that the status quo and business as usual is really, really hurting us. But the good news is people in Chapel Hill are waking up to this. People in Durham are waking up to it. So I do think that the message is going to resonate, provided we can find the right messenger. That's someone who will bring us together as free Americans as opposed to divide us. Uh, you know what's going to really going to take to beat David Price? It's going to take a true Republican to beat David Price. Not a libertarian class and Republican to beat David Price, who's, who's essentially here to divide up our party. If you, are, if you support Ron Paul, then you know what? You need to support my, uh, this uh, young, uh, my uh, young primary opponent, because he's a Ron Paul libertarian, 100%. If you go to his webpage, everything he stands for is right there. I call him Ron Paul Jr. Because that's what he is. He's not going to beat David Price. When David Price looks at this guy, then he's going to look at him and spit him out. If I get in David, David Price's mouth in the first place, it's going to be a really bad day. <laughs> <laughs> all right, now, as, as we all need to take a little deep breath, and, and we're going into the next phase of this debate, and these are closing statements. Two minutes by each person, uh, as agreed to in our coin toss. Uh, uh, Dr. Lawson will go first, and the Reverend Mr. Cho will finish up. You have two minutes, and you're on. 
Thanks. Uh, you know, that's that's a a humorous response to a, I think a perhaps a, an unfair characterization of who I am. I don't define myself by people that I admire. I don't I don't define myself by what other people say about me. All my goal is is to go to Washington and represent the people of the 4th District, and indeed our country, in a way that would make George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, any of a number of the founding fathers or mothers that you think about who operated based upon principle. I just want to make people proud of their government again. I don't think that's too much to ask. The only thing I'd say in closing is I would really strongly encourage each and every one of you who does stand on principle and who does believe our country is going down the wrong road, file and run for something. I was in Raleigh yesterday filing my paperwork. Let me tell you folks, no lines. There's no waiting. It's the express lane. If you want to get involved, I'm not doing this because this is the best thing I could do for my family. I'm not doing this because this is the smartest move I can make financially. I'm doing this because I care about our country, I care about our security, and I care about our economic future. And I would encourage each and every one of you who feels the same way to get involved to do something. Don't just lob stones. It's easy to do that. I've been doing that for years. But politics is too important to be left to the politicians. Thank you very much.